up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for December 2nd, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Victory Monday, our eighth straight Victory Day here, whether it be Monday, Friday, Tuesday. We're here, eighth straight win, 10 and 2 now in the season, 24 19. Now, I had not read the paper or anything like that. I like to come on the day after and just go through my notes from the game. But I'm going to start off with this. What's the excuse now? What is the excuse going to be from our fans, national fans, national media, our media? What's going to be the excuse? First, it was Cleveland. Well, you struggled against Cleveland and almost lost. Then it was the Bengals and Giants. Even though going into those games, they were going to be big tests. Well, they're not good games. Or they're not good teams. And you you should beat them there. Well, the, the Cowboys didn't have Dak. Uh, the Rams aren't as good as we thought they were. Your schedule sucks. This team hasn't played anybody. Just wait till they play a, a good team, and we'll see what happens. Washington, uh, well, they have a rookie quarterback, and uh, they're not as good. We overrated them. Every time going into games leading up to yesterday, there was always a reason why. It was your schedule this, your schedule that. And everybody was hyping this up as a possible Super Bowl preview you have two legitimate mvp candidates you have a a physical defense that is very good against the run what's the excuse now what what's it going to be oh you're not as good as detroit detroit if chicago had a coach with half a brain would have lost uh kansas city they're frauds minnesota it's only a matter of time before sam darnold pulls a Kirk cousins impression um Buffalo, I'll give you Buffalo. They look good, but San Francisco isn't that good this year with all their injuries. And I would put our defense up against Buffalo. So what is going to be the excuse today? Because I'll tell you what, there should not be any excuse. This team is legitimate. That defense is legitimate. Offensively, they were okay. I mean, Saquon did go for over 100 yards. Uh, A.J. Brown had 65 yards. Goddard had a touchdown. Uh, Jalen wasn't great, but he did what he had to do against a very physical defense who came out ready to play. And the Eagles shoved it down their throats. What more does anybody need to see from this team to take them serious? I mean, I'm perfectly fine flying under the radar, being the underdog, whatever. But what's the excuse going to be now? Because I'm telling you, there's no way. There is no excuse. This team is bona fide. This team is legit. Do they still have some things to clean up? Absolutely. Uh, they need to work on the, the starts in the first quarter. Uh, they, they were very lucky to only be down, I think it was 9 nothing after the first quarter yesterday because Justin Tucker, I'm not sure what's going on with him. But it's like from the first quarter on, they just, I don't know. Like I don't know what it is with the first quarter. That's a concern. But they legitimately could win out now the rest of the season the way the schedule. Now, likely they're going to lose one, but there is definitely a legitimate chance this team could win out and go 15 and 2. Because you got Carolina, you got Pittsburgh, who looked better yesterday, but I'm not convinced that Russell Wilson is the answer for them. Uh, Their defense is better than Baltimore, so it'll be tough like that. But. Again, I will put our defense up there. And I'm just anxious to see what people are writing about, if people have come over and said, yes, this team is legitimate or what. But tell me what, like, what, what's it going to be this time? But what a solid win, uh, a good win. They have now, I believe, four of the next five games are at home uh, for the final games. And we talked a lot about those pods. The Eagles went 4-0 over this pot of games. We said we would take 2-2, two and two, and they just went 4-0 over this last four stretch. Now, because of the way the schedule is, it's not an easy division by four. So we'll do it. The last five games now, the Eagles could legitimately go 5-0. I don't. I mean, I would have said 4-0 doesn't seem realistic over this past pot of four games. But they could. there's no – nothing would surprise me at this point. So I'm anxious to hear what the stories are. Hopefully people are coming over and, and recognizing that this is a legitimate, bona fide Super Bowl team. 
because after what I saw yesterday, it could have been very easily for them to, they got off to the slow start, making silly mistakes, too many penalties, um, silly penalties that you didn't need to take. And it would have been very easy for them to crumble and fold like, hey, this is an AFC team. It doesn't impact our playoffs in the NFC that much at all. It's just packing in. We got four of the next five at home. But they came back and came back strong. There, there's just a different vibe about this team. And hopefully the, the stories are about them being a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Uh, but like I said, I purposely don't look at it the day after. I'll have more on it tomorrow. But uh, some injury news. Reed Blankenship left with a concussion. Uh, but again, next man up mentality. Uh, hopefully he's fine. Uh, Slay should be able to be clear the concussion protocol. I, I think it was a smart move setting uh, Devontae down. And, and I will say they missed him. Uh, I think you, you could have he would have opened some things up for Jalen, but uh, hard to be mad and disappointed at the way that game played out. Dallas Goddard hurt his knee, did not come back. Not sure what's up with that. I uh, had a little bit of a scare, even though I missed it. Somebody, one of the kids must have paused it. Well, I went to go grab a beer or go to the bathroom or something. And I was like 10 minutes behind the broadcast. I'm like, everybody's talking about Tucker missing a kick or Quinion going out. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm behind. Uh, but he came back and was fine. But defensively, man, they came to play. Uh, they held Derrick Henry in check for the most part. Um, and, I mean, Jalen Carter is going to be a problem. Uh, he was actually fighting through the double teams yesterday, but he is going to be a problem. I feel he was getting held almost, it seemed, every single play. Um, and there were times like when he blew up that little reverse play, was just read it perfectly. And, I mean, this dude is going to be a problem. Zach Bond and N'Kobe Dean played their asses off. The secondary played lights out. I mean, Brandon Graham, without him, they the rotation they had on the D-line played lights out. And they're going to get more guys in that rotation. But the way those dudes played, I mean, this is a bona fide, legit defense. And we've come such a long way from where we were early in the season before the bye. But just an incredible, incredible output. And then finally, I'll leave with this before we get into the three keys. Nick Sirianni deserves that extension. Nick Sirianni, if you were one of the pers- people out there who uh, were calling for him to be fired, I think you owe him an apology. He's done nothing. Like, Listen, he's read the room, realized he needed to change, and ever since that incident with the fans about when he was yelling back, he's gotten it together. I don't know if Howie and Jeff Lurie talked to him, but he's done nothing but have this team ready to go. The, the only negative and downside I have is what's up with the first quarter. It's almost like the scripted plays are the are, are what's holding them down. Like I don't know if they need they they need to just take what they do at, at the, in the second quarter and put that in the first. I, I don't know, but I mean you're, the first fifteen plays you're throwing the Brick Covey and guys like I at Will Shipley. Got some play in the first quarter. Like I, I don't understand it. There's still time to to work through and fix that up. But this team is legit. We have a bona fide Super Bowl contender, and we've come a long way in a year because it was right around this time last year when the whole uh, slide started last year. But good win. Three keys. First key. I said they need to contain Henry and Lamar Jackson and limit their big plays. Henry had 82 yards rushing. Jackson threw for 237 yards, 79 rushing yards, but most of them came at the end. They did a good job of wrapping up both of those guys. I didn't see uh, Lamar had a couple runs, and I kind of had a number in my head, like maybe three to four, maybe five of those runs, if you could limit it to that. And I think I counted uh, before that last one, three. So I think they did a good job containing them. And, I mean, obviously, 82 yards from Derrick Henry. It's a solid day for a running back. 237 yards for uh, Lamar Jackson and two touchdowns. Again, solid day. But they limited them. Uh, so I I think that's a check. 
Uh, second key, I said stick with the run. And as I, I thought early in the game, uh, minus the first play, uh, they did a decent job keeping Saquon in check, but they did not abandon the run. They kept with it, and uh, Saquon ended up 23 rushes for 107 yards and a touchdown. Jalen was solid uh, picking and choosing, and it was it was interesting to see on one of the read options, Tony Romo, as annoying as he was throughout that game yesterday, he did say, he was like, you know what, that, that's setting up a play for later. He was like, you watch. And sure enough, later in that quarter, they ran the same play. Jalen was able to take it for, for first down. Uh, but he, he was solid. So they, they stuck with the run, and it paid dividends late, especially in the fourth quarter, as it has been. So that's a check. And finally, I said they need to be good in the red zone, both offensively and defensively. Um, in the red zone... They they had one touch they allowed one touchdown uh, missed the two the two missed field goals um, but again on, on offense they scored enough uh, they were three for three in the red zone so I think uh, you had Baltimore was one of the top red zone offenses we were one of the top red zone defenses and I think we did a good job there offensively like I said we scored uh, three times in the red zone so. I would say that was a check too. So they hit the three keys and did what they needed to do to win the game. So coming into the season, I admittedly, I thought that this was going to be a, a growth year. I figured the way the team is playing right now is what I thought potentially they could be closer to the end of this year or even beginning of next year. I did not expect it to be as quick of a, a turnaround as it has been. But I think that's a testament to Vic Fangio, Nick Sirianni, and Kellen Moore. Um, and I thought next year they'd be the Super Bowl contender. Goalposts have moved. I think you need to reassess and reevaluate. This is a special year. I think this is a Super Bowl or bust team. Um, I've been saying it for a couple weeks. Hopefully now on a, on a larger scale, everybody else is seeing that. Uh, because this team is legitimate. They just went in uh, toe-to-toe and came out with the win against one of the best teams in the AFC. And you can say, oh, well, they're this or, oh, they're that. But no, going into, I mean, you have two guys that are legit MVP candidates, a a team that everybody picked to go to the Super Bowl, and you just stood toe-to-toe with them, beat them in their house. So this is a Super Bowl or bust year. I I think the goalposts, the goals move. We reassess. We readjust. It's Super Bowl or bust. But let me know your thoughts. Maybe I'm just uh, fired up and and reading the notes from last night. And as I look at it, maybe it'll be different. But I think you have to take this team serious as a Super Bowl contender. But that leads us to the question of the day. Every, Every victory or loss day. We haven't had too many of the loss days. But... After every game, you vote for the GOAT of the game on the Back to the Future voice and text line. Today, is it Saquon Barkley, is it Jalen Carter, or is it the linebackers? I think the linebackers did a phenomenal job. I think I might have to go with the linebackers because they did their job. They stayed at home and made the tackles. But what do you think? Who was the GOAT of the game? 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. Get that anything else about the game off your chest. Want to just do an Eagles chant? That's fine too. But who is your go to the game? Is it Saquon, the linebackers, Bond, and Dean, or Jalen Carter, who I think is just always could be the go to the game? But let me know. I'm going linebackers. I think they did a good job staying at home, limiting the like um, yards after hits and things like that. Not too many missed tackles or broken tackles. So who who do you got? I got the linebackers, but who's your go to the game? 267-495-8531. Back to the future voice and text line. Let me know. But it's a victory Monday, and I'm excited because we have a bona fide Super Bowl contender. All right, some quick housekeeping notes. <coughs> Sorry, I was holding that in. I'm all fired up. Quick housekeeping note. Follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mott, Twitter, and TikTok. On Instagram, at Philly Jimbo. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Continue to spread the word. If you're liking this, likely someone else will as well. And 
it's our reverse advent calendar. It's still time to donate. I'm going over to the Maddie and Dixon community cover today to drop off $500 worth of Target gift cards for family and friends. Thank you if you've already donated. There's still time to donate. Uh, if you if you don't want to donate the, the the supplies, the food, whatever, hit up that GoFundMe, which is in the description. And um, I'm going to make a, another probably Target or Amazon, whatever, and just kind of spend the money on whatever they want. So there's still time for that. If you are doing the reverse advent calendar, today's item is juice boxes. So juice boxes are today's reverse advent calendar item. Any kind will do. Capri Sun, whatever. Uh, right now, I believe if you go to Target, they're on sale. Uh, the uh, Capri Sun. But today's reverse advent calendar is juice boxes. If you want to just donate, even $5 will help. The link is in the description for that. But I'm super, super excited to go over to the Maddie Ann Dixon community cover today and drop off the $500 worth of Target gift cards. That's amazing. And thank you for everybody who has donated. All right, our 25 days of kindness. Uh, today, it's simple. If you're walking and you're in a parking lot or you're in a store or in your neighborhood, wherever, just pick up some trash. Pick it up, put it in the trash can, easy, do something nice, and hopefully somebody sees that and they're like, ah, if I see something and it just catches on. But if you're walking around, you see some trash, just pick it up and throw it in the trash can. Better yet, don't throw your trash on the ground. But that's our 25 days of kindness for today. All right, today, our forgotten team in Philly sports history. This is a team that you either did not know existed or forgot existed are the Camden Skeeters, a.k.a. the Camden Electic Electrics and the Camden Alphas. They are a professional basketball team, one of the earliest professional basketball teams in the country. Uh, they played in the EBL, which is the Eastern Basketball League, the NBL, uh, various other leagues across the, the area. Back then, before the NBA, the the leagues would pop up and they were very fluid. Um, this t league would pop up and it would fold or they would combine with another league. But the Camden Skeeters played over the river in Camden uh, in the very, very early days of professional basketball. They were around for 34 seasons from 1899 to 1932. They compiled a record of 415 and 369. They won three championships. They appeared in six championships throughout the various leagues that they played in and really due to the depression like a lot of these early sports teams they were unable to sustain it and ended up folding but today the Camden Skeeters are our forgotten team that you didn't even know existed because I didn't know they existed uh, but that's all part of our Philly sports history advent calendar as we go through the forgotten teams leading up to the holidays all right today we're going to go back to 1991. And on this day in 1991, it was the House of Pain game. And the Eagles beat the Houston Oilers 13-6 down in the Astrodome. The Astrodome was known as the House of Pain. This was a Monday night football game basically because of the way the Oilers played. Uh, they brought pain to their opponents. Wide open. Defenses couldn't keep up. They had the run and shoot offense led by Warren Moon. They were undefeated at home that year. Uh, they were a very hard team to beat. And if you remember, this was the year that Randall got hurt. We had Jim McMahon and uh, all the other stable of quarterbacks that were in and out that year. But the defense was one of the best in the league. So it was the best offense versus the best defense, much like yesterday's game. Our defense showed up. Had four sacks on Warren Moon, five turnovers, all fumbles. That just goes to show you how hard hitting that game was. They held Warren Moon to 264 yards, zero touchdown passes, and Seth Joyner was the GOAT of the game. Was sick, probably should not even have been playing in that game. Felt like absolute crap, but they, he said there was no way he was missing that game. He had two sacks, two fumble recoveries, and just balled out while also being sick with the flu. Pretty much it was all field goals except for Keith Jackson had a 21-yard touchdown catch from Jeff Kemp. 
remember him. Uh, but coming into the game, it was all about Bud Carson and what he was going to do. Uh, was he going to switch up his defense? And he did. He changed up the, the the alignment and changed his philosophy in order to contain Moon. And it really, really did work. Um, they dared them to run because they were not a good running team and they couldn't do it. And the Eagles laid the smack down on them. And it was known as the house of pain game because Jerome Brown, after the game had one of the most famous quotes of all time in Eagles history, they brought the house. We brought the pain. Uh, you gotta love JB. Uh, but if you're a new listener, you know, you'll, you won't know this, but if you're, uh, one of our, um, if you've been listening to us for a while, you know how I feel about that 91 Eagles defense. It is, hands down, the best defense ever. If you're a new listener and you don't agree, feel free. But I will put them up against the 85 Bears, the 2000 Ravens, the Buccaneers from what uh, 2000, the early 2000s. Um, I'll put that 91 Eagles defense against them all. But on this day back in 1991, it was the House of Pain game. The Eagles went down to the Astrodome on Monday Night Football and beat the Oilers 13-6, stifling the run-and-shoot offense of Warren Moon and the Oilers. Uh, The Eagles would finish that season 10-6, but not make the playoffs, basically due to not having a quarterback all year. But the greatest defense of all time brought the, the... The Oilers brought the house. The Eagles brought the pain, as Jerome Brown said. We will have more on the Eagles tomorrow as I'm able to kind of rewatch some things and, and go through uh, just some news and notes and, and go through all my notes. I did a lot of this off the cuff, by the way. I have a whole my phone is full of notes that I'll look at tomorrow. Uh, but I am pumped. We have a Super Bowl contender in town. Uh, the Camden Skeeters, they're our forgotten Philly sports team. We'll have more, like I said, on the Eagles, Sixers, Flyers. Uh, maybe we can get, get a Philly signing this week. Uh, but today's reverse advent calendar item for donation is juice boxes. If you'd rather just donate, the link is in the description. And be sure to just pick up some trash. It goes a very, very long way in just doing the right thing and being nice. Uh, so if you see some trash laying around, pick it up. Be sure to let me know who your go to the game is. Is it Saquon, the linebackers, or is it Jalen Carter? 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. But go enjoy your victory Monday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for December 2nd, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. And until next time, go Birds! Go Birds!